Florida, Florida, Florida. That's where the investor I'm working with today lives. You know what's cool about Florida? It's warm. Yeah, it's real warm in Florida, right? People love vacationing in Florida. You got the ocean. You got warm, sunny weather, right? But some people from Florida, like my client, come up to Cleveland to do investing because it's a lot cheaper, right? But you know what happens in Cleveland that don't happen in Florida? It gets cold, bro. It gets cold. Usually when it's cold, people stop vacationing up here, right? Usually. It's par for the course. You got to take the good with the bad, right? You pay less money, but there's some drawbacks. Well, guess what? I'm going to show you how to avoid the winter slowdown with your Airbnb properties in Cleveland right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. I'm James Wise. I'll be your real estate guru today, right? I'll be your guide. I'll be helping you understand short-term rentals in Cleveland, right? And by you, I mean Jose, okay? Folks, I sent this video to Jose a long time ago, right? He's working with me one-on-one. -on -one. So the property I'm going to show in this show is not available. Don't call the office and be like, oh, I'm by Raleigh. That's a street property. Guys, Send it to him privately. It's only released publicly after the fact. You want to work with me one-on-one -on -one like Jose is doing in real time, hit us up, right? Send us an email. Put your number on there. We'll call you. Or you can click the link uh, below to order a package or book a call, and we'll talk to you about your wants, your needs, your goals, and get you real-time videos. These then get published later, right? But for you, Jose, right? For you. This one's cool, man. We've been going over all these Airbnb properties, and a lot of them are pretty cool. But one thing <clears throat> that they all have in common, right, is, of course, there's going to be more people vacationing there when it's warm, like it is all the time where you're from in Florida, than when it's cold, right? But not this one. This is the first one I got for you that's got a little something extra, bro. It's got a little uh, special reason why people are going to want to come here when it's cold. Let me show you what that is, how to take advantage of it, and how to structure the deal right now. Welcome back. Cold weather, right? Cold weather. Cold weather in Cleveland is what hurts our short-term investments, right? People in real estate, you got to go with the pros and the cons. You got to understand that there is no perfect deal. What? What's going on? Why has he got this little fat bastard from the Christmas Story movie on his computer? That might be what you're wondering. <laughs> Don't you worry. In a moment, I will explain to you, okay? I will explain why I got that fat little bastard on my computer here momentarily. But you have to understand why I dick around with this. That everything in real estate <clears throat> is going to have a pro and it's going to have a con, okay? There's nothing that's just like awesome, 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 right? There's pros and cons, right? So a lot of people, a lot of people come to Holton Wise from expensive markets, right? Expensive markets like California, right? Super expensive. Florida, right? Hawaii, okay? Now we're talking short-term rental investing, right? People in those markets that probably have a better tourism uh, infrastructure, business, whatever, what have you, because they're uh, more desirable destinations, right? But they come to a different market like Cleveland, right? Like, dude, we're talking tourism, right? California, Hawaii, Florida. Obviously, more people are vacationing there, okay? But there's pros and cons, right? If you can't afford to start a short-term rental property business in those markets, because those markets are incredibly expensive, right? You can get much cheaper properties like this one in Cleveland, right? So the pro is 
it's much cheaper. But the con is you got things like it's Cleveland, right? It's Cleveland. It gets really cold in the winter. And you know what happens to our occupancy in the winter for short-term rentals? Woo! Nose dives, right? It gets cold. Not a lot of people vacate. The same Hawaii, the same California, the same Florida. But I'm here to show you a little workaround, folks. A little workaround. Your boy Jay Wise has put together a nice little property for you that's not going to see the typical drop-off because this sucker is a tourist trap. A tourist trap focused on the winner, y'all. Remember that fat little bastard, right? That fat little bastard I had popped up thinking you just caught me off guard. Jay Wise wasn't ready for the show. No, Jay Wise was ready for the show. And the show's about this fat little fuck, okay? Remember this movie, Christmas Story movie? I don't know about you guys, but every friggin' year around Christmas time, my dad watches this movie, like, on loop, because it's played on loop on TNT, right? Christmas Story, okay? Little known fact. Well, maybe it's a widely known fact. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't travel outside of Cleveland all that awesome, often, and people in Cleveland know this. I don't know if you all know this, but the Christmas Story house, the house, you know, with the lamp, right? Where's the lamp? Where's the friggin' lamp, man? Like this house, right? This house that this kid's in and the house that had this this lamp right here. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. There we go. Remember this leg lamp? Yeah, well, guess what? Guess where that house was? It was down the street from this house in Cleveland, folks. Okay? 1154 Raleigh Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44109. This house is literally down the street to that original house in that movie. It is now uh, a tourist trap, so to speak, right? It's like a, a museum, uh, like, whole thing, right? Let me show you this here, okay? Do a little copy action here. Let's go to the Googler so I can show you guys just how close this is. Because, you know, this is real estate, right? You get a lot of people that are like, oh, it's really close to this, and it's really not close. People are like, oh, it's in this neighborhood or that neighborhood, and it's, it's actually it ends up being kind of far, uh, but not in this case, okay? We are, like, literally right there, right? There we go. Look at that. It is a two-minute walk to the Christmas Story house, folks. So the cool thing about, see? Here's the house. Boop, 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 boop. There's the Christmas story house. There's all the big parking lot and all that jazz, right? The cool thing about the Christmas story house is when do you think people go there, right? Because they got the whole thing set up. It's like a museum. People pay money. It's insane, right? Uh, like there's literally a line uh, of people down the street that like stretches blocks and blocks right like the line of people to try to get into the christmas story house around christmas time probably goes past this home right here right and it's all during the winter it's all during christmas time right just when the cleveland market short-term rental occupancy takes the nosedive is when this property is going to pick up right so Outside of the fact that it's down the street from the Christmas Story house and that fat little bastard, it's in Tremont, which is one of the most desirable areas in Cleveland, right? That's where people want to be. Ohio City, Tremont, Gordon Square, right? When you hear me talk about short-term rental investing, I'm talking about those gentrified, nice A-grade neighborhoods, right? So during the warm months, the same reason people are staying and all the other really nice properties built in these areas, they'll stay at yours. But then when everybody else occupancy Nose dives in the winter, yours is actually going to pick up. Pow! Right? So, other stuff. Rock Hall, Cavs, Indians, Browns, or Guardians, depending on how woke you are. Rock Hall, all that jazz, right? And then you get the extra bonus of being the house down the street for a nice little touristy trap. Now, other cool thing. This house, it's actually uh, two. It's a duplex, right? Front, back. Now, normally, uh, I don't like to do... Uh, like, I wouldn't want to do a duplex in, like, just, like, a regular neighborhood as an Airbnb. Uh, I think full houses rent better, but in this case, it makes sense to do so, right? Uh, this, at one point, was actually ran as a bar. Uh, so the front house is much larger, and the back house is smaller. 
And right now, there's currently two like actual long-term tenants. One's paying a thousand, the other's paying five hundred. Uh, so when we buy the property, Holton Wise will take over regular property management and just uh, work those folks out when their leases expire, right? Both people are under 12 months here. And then we turn it into an Airbnb, right? You could tell, look how wide open this thing was. This at one point was a bar. And we don't really need to do like anything like insane, insane, but we're going to want to deck some stuff out. So I've like, we won't have to redo this kitchen. Like, this is all fine, and we got the hardwoods throughout, but I'm sure we'll need to, like, repaint and stuff when these people move out. And then the other unit, much smaller, is going to need some other love as well. Uh, but more or less, we got, you know, the wood floors and all that's looking good. But you have to understand, this is an older home, right? So I got a little bit of money uh, baked into the cake for, you know, bigger ticket items like your furnaces, your roof, and all that jazz. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's looking okay. Like, yeah, we'll need to improve this bathroom. But, like, we don't need to do major overhauls here, right? On-site laundry, nice little gate action, okay? So, what I have planned for you folks, right? Here's what the numbers would look like. They're asking two and a quarter. I think we could come in, okay? I think we can come in at two. And then I got 60 k total, right, between reno and furnishings, right? We're going to deck both of these units out, bunch of beds, Make them look really, really nice. Maybe have a little bit left over if we need to button up some uh, capital expenditure items because it is an old property, right? As you see from the pictures, it looks good. It's got the hardwoods. Kitchen seem fine. Uh, but we're going to want to utilize that money to provide a crisp, clean space, right? So all told, 60 k uh, It could be 20 40 could be 25 35 but more or less anticipate spending about 60k and the cool thing is right renovations furnishings all that folks you could pay that to holton wise via credit card so you don't even need that cash up front right so all told we'll be all into the investment for 260 right and then the front house should easily rent uh for 300 because that is a nice little three two and the back house is much smaller should be able to rent it for 175 right so these are not full homes right so it's not like you could do the incredibly large uh amounts of guests right like big huge family reunions unless they rent both of them which is of course very possible right but when you guys see me uh do some of these like full houses like we like to go for the highest uh nightly rent possible and you do that by having a whole bunch of people that could sleep there right you don't want to allow a bajillion people here because it's a duplex, right? You'll bother your other tenants, right? You'll bother your other guests, right? That's why we typically avoid uh, the duplexes, right? Because you can't, you know, get the big things and pack out the nightly rent. But here it makes sense. It's a tourist area. Uh, I mean, I guess you could probably rent the whole thing as one if you really wanted. But I think we'll make more money splitting it up but going to smaller groups, right? So three and 175. So all told, if you rented it every day, that'd be 1475 or 176,000 a year. But don't sell it. Yeah, like that little fat bastard, Christmas Story House. Yeah, it's all cool. But like people ain't staying in this house every single day, right? So to be more accurate here, we'll still factor in a 38% vacancy. And after you pay all of your fixed and variable expenses, including paying Holton Wise to manage the sucker for you, I anticipate you guys bringing home a clean four grand a month or just close, just under 50K, right? So for a $260,000 investment, 50K, it's all you need. 50K out of your pocket for the down payment on your loan. Then we're going to get a lender to get you the other 150K. By the way, folks, if you need lenders, boom, I got them for you. Send us an email, right? So 50K from you, 150K from the lender, and then, of course, that 60K or so, right? We have to do more due diligence, get the home inspection done, get the team in there, see exactly what we need to do, right? Uh, you know, make sure, like, those two tenants that are living there don't kick a bunch of holes in the walls on the way out, things of that nature, right? Uh, but it should be about 60. You could pay that to Holton Wise via credit card, right? So all told, $260,000 investment, 110. Uh, out of your pocket and via credit card, $150,000 from the mortgage. That should, under my estimations, result in a 38% cash-on-cash return. Completely passive because Holton Wise will handle the whole shebang and you don't have to worry about the big drop-off come November, December that all the other short-term rentals are facing. That's why I feel like this thing is a banger of a deal. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.